Hi Chemist, welcome to Mr. Fan's Review. So when it comes to calculating energy requirements for changes of states, as you guys have seen since last week, we've lit a blow torch to a block of ice. And you guys have already seen something, that when we lit this blow torch onto the ice, you've seen that the temperature of the ice didn't really change that much. And the reason why that's important is usually you guys are used to using this formula here, Q equals MC delta T, or as I call it, Q equals MCAT. But the thing is, when there's no change in temperature, what would delta T be? Tel delta T would be just flat out zero. Plug in zero to this formula, you wouldn't really get anything. And so the question now is, well, we know energy's put in. You've seen a blowtorch melt ice. Now the question is, well, how do we take into account the changes of state? Well, we need to understand what this is. Heat of fusion. And heat of fusion is defined as what you see here. It's defined as the energy needed to melt one gram of a substance. For example, the most common thing that we like to use, water. So water in the form of ice at zero degrees Celsius is going to take this much joules for every one gram in order to do the following. The following. To either turn from solid water to liquid water or back from liquid water to solid water. And that number is going to stay the same, defined as this value here, 334 joules per gram. Now, do you have to memorize that? No, but you should be expected to know how to use it. And so H is for heat. And fusion is going to be, well, just the transition from this state of matter to this state of matter and back and forth. Now, when it comes to the other states of matter, let's say from here to here, from liquid to gas, or backwards from gas to liquid, we have a different value. Instead of 334, through math, through experimental data, we figured out that in order for our liquid water to transition to gaseous or the other way around, it's around this value over here. The heat to vaporize water from liquid to gas and backwards is calculated as 2,260 joules per gram. Now, why is that important? Well, here we go. If you take a look at what's down here, as a reminder, energy, heat, I mean, sorry, temperature remains constant when we change phases of matter. Keep that in mind. You ready for me to erase this? Great. Okay. Here's an example. Really simple, really easy, pretty much a one-step process. And here's your question over here. Example problem 9-6. The question asks us the following. How many joules of energy are required to melt 8.5 grams of solid water ice at zero degrees Celsius? And what sticks out to me right here is I need to stop, put my pencil down, and think to myself, hmm, what am I working with? Taking a look at the question, do I know what I'm trying to find? And two, what do I have to work with? And so just to recap, if I were sitting in your shoes right there, sitting on your couch eating potato chips and chilling and watching this video, I need to figure out joules, a unit of energy. And then I sit back and think, hmm, what can I do to figure out how much energy something can contain? Do I choose to find energy in the form of Q equals MCAT? Or do I choose to find energy in the form of just dimensional analysis through finding the heat required to change from one state of matter to the other? Well, here we go. Let's see what I have. I have 8.5 grams. That's a mass. And what I'm gonna do is also point this out over here. Usually these values are given. It's hard to see. If you can pause the video and zoom in, you're more than welcome to. 334 joules per gram. And remember from a couple of minutes ago, this is defined as the amount of energy required to transition from one state of matter to the other for this state here, solid to liquid or from liquid to gas. And let's just see how the calculation works out. We're gonna start out with what I've just circled here, 8.5 grams. 8.5 grams of what? We have to be specific to both the measurements, our units, and our substance. 
grams of water, H2O. And so with that 8.5 grams of water, let's see what we can do to turn grams into joules. So hopefully something can come up in between and actually show us how we go from one unit to another. And aha, we found it just like here, what I've just boxed, we said it before, 334 joules per gram. And so before we do the math, Mr. Pham tells his class that when it comes to doing dimensional analysis, we don't like getting sued. We need to show everything, no cutting corners. Show the units working out first before you crunch in the numbers. And so we're gonna do that right now. We have grams of water on top and we have grams of water on the bottom. Just like your Algebra 1 class, if we see two similar units or variables on the top and the bottom, they are going to cancel out. Grams of water cancel out here and here. And before we crunch in the numbers, I need to ask myself, what units do I end with? Joules. And isn't that what I really want at the end of this equation? Absolutely. And so now I feel justified to go forth and crunch in the numbers. Boom. Here we go. 2,800 joules of energy needed. And so just to double check, sig figs, they're not going to go away. So to verify this number here, why is it two sig figs? Just to make sure, one, two sig figs. When we're multiplying numbers between each other, we have to figure out the rules of multiplication for sig figs. Find the number with the least amount of sig figs. Three sig figs here, two sig figs here. Taking a look at the least amount of sig figs, we would take two sig figs, just like this answer here. Two sig figs. And then, Hopefully you guys are excellent scholars. You'll box your answer to say that I am done and I am locked in. Just kidding, a little ninja edit. We stopped right here when we boxed our answer, 2,800 joules of energy added. And we said locked in to sig figs. That's right. But we forgot something. What if at the end of, let's say, a hypothetical free response, we want you to put your answer in scientific notation? Well, we're going to make sure that we still keep our answer at two sig figs. Hopefully you guys have looked back in unit six and know how to do scientific notation. And so here we go. Your answer in scientific notation should be the following. 2.8 times 10 to the three joules of energy added. You can actually expand it on your own just to verify it, but it is still indeed 2,800 joules of energy. Still two sig figs. All right, now I'm good to go, guys. Thank you guys for watching.